What's up, dudes? It's Inglewood here. And I'm the Snurdiper. And we are the Killing Esports StarCraft II commentary duo from your nightmares. Yeah, it's pretty much... If there's a way to kill esports, we have found it. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't think we've ever cast on this map before. Uh, what is this? I have no idea. We're gonna call it Shining Rainbow Fairy fucking... Unicorn Land. We're here on Shining Rainbow Fairy fucking Unicorn Land, and we have a TVP for you guys. Starting out in the top left position is the Blue Terran Feeg... So? Yeah, uh, Feeg who so is, uh, you know, he's a, a player from Bolivia, and let me tell you something, he has the best, um, worker rush in the game. It comes in at about 16 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, can't uh, wait for that one. So it's an incredible timing attack, and it just it just catches his opponents off guard so often. Right, you pack that chew. Uh, and <laughs> in the bottom right position is the red Protoss. Yeah, you knocked that heroin spoon off your counter. <laughs> the red Protoss <laughs> Excalion, who uh, is also from Bolivia. And fun fact, his grandmother makes an outstanding fettuccine Alfredo. So there's that. Yeah, Fettuccine Alfredo, uh, surprisingly enough, was illegal in Bolivia until 1985. Right, and she was paramount in getting the prohibition of Alfredo removed from the books. <laughs> <laughs> Not that anyone in Bolivia knows what to do with a book. <laughs> <laughs> Other than make small fires and 55 gallon drums with it. Yeah, and, and hold it up at church. <laughs> yep. Uh, so let's see. Figukukso has done a slow wall off of his ramp. But that's and... okay because the other guy hasn't scouted yet. Oh yeah, he did. He, he scouted it almost immediately. So if you look at his vision, he, he saw that there was no gas, although there is a gas now. So he did a, a quite a bit, an early scout that really gave him no information. But he did see that it was actually a Terran who wasn't lifting off and flying to the corner of the map to be an asshole. So I guess that's some good information to have, sort of. Uh, but he did retreat and go back to that Zelnaga Tower at the north position of the middle map. So a bit of a, a, bit of a waste of that probe's time. He could have been carrying some minerals around or being productive some other way. Yeah, but we have a gateway uh, gonna slam down. It looks about equal to the barracks. So, uh, these guys are relatively slow on the, uh... That's weird, because he's already got his first gateway up at the top of the ramp at his natural. So he's now made two gates, and he's chronoing out warp gate technology. So that makes me think that he's feigning and expand to look like he wants to take that quick natural. Hey, look, I'm setting up to wall off my natural's ramp. Her -da 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 -da. But the Terran's too smart here. He's like, oh, I'm just gonna stick around and watch you do that. And build uh, a bunker in your base. Yeah, I, I totally delayed that expansion that you're trying to put down, right? Because you're trying to put down an expansion, right? But no, it looks like he actually wants to chrono out a gateway units. And this is a pretty big map. So that's not, not... This is no steps of war. You can't just chrono out of two gates and get to your enemy's base in like five seconds. So I'm not sure what he's actually doing here. Maybe they're just horrible at StarCraft. I mean, there's always that. Yeah. But we're um, seeing the uh, the the famous uh, two stalker one zealot hang out at the base and play <laughs> cards. So yeah, that's uh, definitely a union protoss. Def definitely a union protoss. <laughs> the rain man. Uh, so Co Forge comes down with one more gateway. I just I don't I don't even know. He took two gas and he's got three workers in each gas, which makes me think he needs a lot of gas. But he's not doing anything at all. He's got money for an expansion that he's not throwing down. He's floating 200 gas. He's supply cap. Both of them are supply cap. Um, yeah, this is just going to be the worst timing attack in history. Two zealots in a century and a couple stalkers at like the 10 minute mark by the time he gets over to it. Yeah, and uh, if you look at the other side of this, you got a couple of marauders inside a barracks that's in a really awkward position. It can't defend the uh, mineral line and it's not right here in front of the ramp. I mean, I guess you gotta run past it, but there's a quick area, you know, you can just catch up the side on the right there, 
and get shot at very minimally. Yeah, that's a pretty silly position. And at first I thought, when you mentioned that, I was like, well, maybe he's just covering the ramp. Because uh, we see that a lot too. Because then you can raise the supply depots, you kind of trap them between the bunker and the ramp. But no, I mean, he can't even, I don't even think he's in range of the top of that ramp. Maybe he is, but not like anyone's going to be trying to go there anyway when there's an expansion down at the natural. So Excalion's going to come in here and finally see this, and well, I guess that running up the right side of the ramp thing didn't work for one single probe at a time. No, definitely not. So he shits on that probe, and in response, Figikuzo is going to take half a dozen units and roll south with him. Yeah, uh, you know, he's got his... Uh... He's got his jogging marines led by his marauder, and I guess they're just going to hang out at the Zelnaga Tower. Yeah, that just sounds like bad micro. <laughs> I think he's like, well, I'll just send it down here, and then I'll be paying such good attention to it that I'll immediately rally it further south. But no, he's actually completely enamored with this factory that just finished, and he fucked up the add-on on it and had to cancel it. Uh, so he's trying to do... I think he was going to throw down a reactor there and then realized, oh, I already have a reactor, so I'll just lift off onto that. I, uh, I, uh, who are these people? <laughs> I don't know, but he's built the starport now and nothing on his factory. Yeah, I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt there, because, I mean, the, the factory and the starport being that close together is like an obvious tech switch. His, uh, There's no... His half a dozen units are moving south now. And they're just gonna... To the next tower. <laughs> and they're just gonna hang out, I guess. Dude, this guy's game-changing. Um, so... You're, you're about five seconds ahead of me, I think. Oh, probably. I, I snuck it a little early there. <laughs> oh, that's uh, okay, because he's built a considerable army at home. And if we come down to this uh, Protoss, it looks to be the same thing. I think this is gonna be a 200 versus 200 battle to the death. Yeah, almost certainly. Uh, Observer is gonna creep out of that robotics facility we just finished. And they're still an even supply, so the Observer's gonna go up there and say, Oh, hey, look, you're just as bad as I am. We both have a tiny army. Let's just macro for another ten minutes, because I'm so afraid of losing. Yes, definitely. Now, uh, um... It's, yes. It, you look at this uh, tech difference. Uh, the production coming out of uh, Fig Kuzo is uh, incredible. <laughs> compared to Zalian. That was not as incredible as you pronouncing that so beautifully and quickly as if you'd rehearsed it. Oh, Fit Kuzo? Yeah, wow. He did it again. Yeah. Alright, uh, yeah, he is, he's kind of busy in, in many different departments here at the, uh, the headquarters of Terran Industries, Inc. He's going ghosts, he's doing bio upgrades, he's already done combat shields and stim, but he has not done concussive shells for those marauders in that bunker, which would be outstanding for him. He's knocking out Medivacs, he's added on his armory, so he can continue with plus one, plus one, or even beef up the Medivacs if he wants to. And there's Concussive Shell. Yeah, about time. And that Ghost Academy should be pretty good. I s suspect he just wants to have a few Ghosts out on the map for EMPs. Uh, ooh, Medivac is actually going to go out and try and do some dropping, but he flies right over that Cloaked Observer there. So the Protoss is going to be completely aware that this is coming, if he was good enough to watch the mini-map. Which, which, no. According to his stalker movements, no, he was actually watching porn on his other monitor. You know, uh, when you said clocking out, the, I was only thinking, like, uh, he was knocking out teeth, clocking much dollars on the first and 15. Who's that? Dope man. Dope and get it. Dope and get it. The dope, the dope, dope, dope and get it. No, no. The original dope man. Easy. Alright. Well, I'll let you do that rendition. Uh, so this drop gets crushed by stalkers because they didn't go for the mineral line. They decided to shoot at this one warp gate, which was apparently incredibly offensive to the Terran overlords. So they knocked down its shields halfway and lost an entire drop. That sure showed that Protoss. Yeah, Protoss are gonna know that we was angry. Maybe they'll vote our way in the next election. Yeah. That, that's his theory, I think. All right, well, Colossus is about to pop out for the Protoss, and that's going to be step one to the Protoss Death Ball Mantra. And it looks like uh, Extended Thermal Lance has actually been researched as well, so it will have that extra two range. And the Protoss's ground units are on 1-1 one, one now, as are the Terran. So upgrades are the same. A bit of a supply lead for the Terran, but not so much that I would be concerned about it. 
Uh, what I think is going to be really telling here is the control of the ghosts, and if he can get a couple good MPs, uh, EMPs to really neuter that Protoss army. Yeah, I see that he's not researched Cloak. <clears throat> I'm really happy to see that he hasn't gone nukes. You don't like nukes? Well, I, I just don't think that they're effective in any way. Oh, no, but they sure are fun to watch because they're very pretty looking on the screen. And that yeah. makes girls subscribe to your YouTube channel. Oh. Uh, so we would know nothing three. about how to get people. No. Oh, no. he's shooting his own guy. What? Oh, uh, no, no, he, he, he took out the observer. observer. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Yay. Uh, so this little squad, this detachment here at the South Zelnaga Tower has been doing their job beautifully well for about 15 minutes now. Uh, making sure that the leaves don't blow in the wrong direction and uh, kind of holding down the fort for this auxiliary force that's about to come and join them. Yeah, the and, Johnny Hangaround squad. Yeah, and the, the Terran's got that 20 supply advantage, which is kind of nice to have, but he is down a base now that the third is just now going to be completing for Excalion. Oh, but those ghosts run right out in front of the army and leave not EMP at all. They just get oh, thrown away. Annihilated. Yeah, I see really a quick stand. A uh, little bit of the army gets cut off, and uh, some yeah. of those Marauders and Marines get taken down. Forcefield really won that engagement, uh, but in the Terran's defense, he did knock out that Colossus first, and that was really the, the powerhouse of that army. So he's going to run back to his nicely defended little ramp here where he's got lots of ghosts with energy and a bunker up, and I think he'll be pretty well set to defend this, especially since there's, there's no proxy pylon. Oh, there they are, there's the ghosts. Hopefully uh, he'll get some uh, EMPs off of them ghosts and uh, uh, disable those shields, but it looks like Zalian, or Scallion, or Shrimp Cocktail, uh, is waiting for his other uh, Colossus to get there before yeah. moving in. And that's going to be very nice for him. He's going to come and knock down those destructible rocks. It looks like, nah, he's just kind of feigning that way. He's just checking to see if there's a third base. Uh, Bubble comes up to defend against the range damage. He forces his way up the ramp down the knob, and he gets met by. Looks like an EMP went down. There's a lot of. Yeah, I think an EMP did go down. Shitty one. Uh, but an attempt, so good for you. Uh, and that actually is going to be enough to force all that shit away from Excalion. So, a decent hold, and. The Yik Kuzo retains the bit of the lead in the supply count it's that he has. Big Kuzo. Now, um. What I, what I was wondering is, uh, as a player, I think that he made a huge error by chasing them down the ramp instead of drawing them towards his bunker. Would you Yeah, agree? um, no, because bringing him into the bunker, I mean, if it does fall, then he's now dangerously close to the mineral line and he has to pull workers and all that gets very nasty. But if he's retreating, it's nice to take, you know, whatever free shots you can get because you're not getting... You're not getting damaged when they're running away from you, so yes. it's it's kind of like exploiting a little bit of a uh, a weak chink in the enemy's defenses. <laughs> chink. Speaking uh, of chinks, uh, medevac full of chinks is coming down the left side of the map now. He's going to try and do another wondrous drop on an unsuspecting gateway somewhere. Yeah, and uh, hopefully he'll uh, actually get all the way through the shield this time. <laughs> nah, never. It's never going to happen. He's probably going to go for the assimilators this time and make sure he doesn't disrespect any workers because that would be foul play. Yeah, uh, it's uh, definitely not something you'll want to do. But the Terran's also moving an army south, and uh, Salian, Salian, Stallion is uh, not in this uh, third base. He's starting to move down, and it's allowing the uh, Terran units to move down. Oh, Miss Micro on that medevac trying to get it away, and it actually jukes back into fire. I mean, it probably would have gotten shot down anyway, but didn't do itself any favors. Uh, but yeah, that big force from the Terran poked into his own third base to look around and make sure there weren't any proxy pylons in there, so I did like that. And he moves south as if he's going to contemplate making a push here, and now is really the time. If he doesn't do it right now, he's going to start falling way, way behind. Uh, considering the economic disadvantage that he's at. He's going to scan that third base and see that, that big old base. ball sitting there. No, that's a third base. How, how, how is that a fourth? Because he scanned the fourth base. There is no fourth base. I know, but he scanned this area. Oh. <laughs> okay. I don't know why. 
Um, a couple of ghosts move in by themselves. Brave souls, full energy, and they didn't EMP. They didn't do... Oh, one EMP goes oh, off, takes God. out a bunch of stalker shields, and now he's going to come in with the big force, and he's got a couple of Vikings in tow. I do like that. Uh, but, oh, Jesus, that's so many Colossi now. And look at the bankroll for the Protoss as well. He can resupply this like crazy. Yeah, um, if I were him, I would be... Uh producing more units and trying to uh, get up to that 200 to 200. Yeah, High Templar now rolling out all unprotected. Eight of them are going to move across and try and find some ghosts that can snipe them to death, but they aren't. Uh, that's going to be pretty killer storms when this engagement does happen, I think, because they've all been out for a little while and they're all sitting on a bunch of energy. The Protoss' production tab has been blank for a good while now. He hasn't made a unit in like a full minute at least. And he's not maxed out, but I, honestly, he doesn't need to be with an army composition like this. This is like the perfect army. And here we go. They're going to clash in the middle. A little miss micro by the Terran. He does stim up and he engages. And I can't even tell who's got the better concave here, but I do know who's got the most colossi in storms. And I think that's going to be the, the tale of the day. Yeah, that's definitely, uh, you know, if if that uh, Terran player uh, actually paid fucking attention and you know, focus fired his enemies, he might have done a lot better there. Oh, and he's gonna rally all of these workers right into this Protoss army. I don't know if that's a bad rally because the third base isn't finished. Yes, that is. So all of those SCVs come in and get just wasted for no reason whatsoever. Stalkers and Zealots are here and they've got way too many pointy things to, to deal with, uh, <clears throat> for these two Marauders to deal with, that is. And yeah, they just get torn the fuck down. Oh, look at that. Manor scans. All those manor scans come down. He just spammed like eight scans in a row. And he actually says good games. That's a nice little chivalry here now and again on killing esports. Yeah, um I think he was definitely outmatched. Uh, not that it means that the other guy was any good. I mean, but nineteen and seventeen and fifteen kills on those three Colossus, he you know, he he definitely uh he definitely kept pushing and pushing when he needed to, and that was something that uh, Fig Kuzo did not do. Mr. Fig Kuzo didn't do a lot of things. Um, yeah. Making two Vikings against four Colossi was not a good move. You want to have two Vikings for each Colossus on the field as a general rule of thumb, if you can afford it. And he couldn't really afford it because he was still on two base 23 minutes into the game. So production was not there, the micro was not there, there was a few fumbled miss micro things that he did. His drops weren't very effective, and his ghosts were on vacation, so just outplayed by Excalion all the way through it. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for watching.